Hello students, welcome back to your history class. I am Mrs. Jenny Shah and today we are doing the ninth chapter of the Industrial Revolution. Last class, we learned what is Industrial Revolution and you all understood the chapter at a glance. At the same time, I told you the background and from where we get the evidence and sources. Today, we jump into the chapter. Okay, so the question is, why Britain? Britain was the first country to experience modern industrialization. It had been politically stable since the 17th century, with England, Wales and Scotland unified under a single monarchy. It meant that the kingdom now had common laws, a single currency and a market that was not fragmented by local authorities levying taxes on goods that passed through their area, thus increasing their price. By the end of the 17th century, money was widely used as the medium of exchange. By then, a large section of the people received their income in the form of wages and salaries rather than in goods. This gave people a wider choice for ways to spend their earnings and expand the market for the sale of goods. In the 18th century, England had been through a major economic change, later described as the Agricultural Revolution. This was the process by which Bigger landlords brought up small farms near their own properties and enclosed the village common land, thus creating very large estates and increasing food production. This forced the landless farmers and those who lived by grazing animals on common lands to search for new jobs elsewhere and most of them went to the nearby town. Okay, so why Britain? Britain was the first country to experience modern industrial revolution. And that is because Britain was politically stable since 17th century. England, Wales and Scotland, these three were politically united under a single monarchy. That meant that all three of them had common laws, they had single currency, and a single market okay scotland england and wales now since there was no taxation by the local authority what happened the local authority stopped taking taxes so by the end of 17th century money became the most uh, common medium of exchange and a large section of people started to get their uh, income in the form of wages or salaries instead of goods. And this meant that people would spend that money, they would spend their income for purposes. And in that way, the market started to develop in Britain. In the 18th century, major economic change happened in Britain. And this is called the Agricultural Revolution. Now what happened is the big landlords, they started to purchase the small farms near their own properties. And they also started to encroach or take over the common lands of the village. And this in turn created large estates for those big land loan lots. And it also led to a big increase in the food production. But on the other hand, the ones who lived by grazing animals on the common lands and the ones who did not have farms at all, they started to search for new jobs and they started to move towards the towns. Okay. So from 18th century, many towns in Europe were growing in area and population. 
out of the 19 European cities whose population doubled between 1750 and 1800, 11 of those were in Britain. And the largest was them was London, which served as the hub of this country's market, with the next largest ones located close to it. So London uh, also acquired a global significance and by 18th century, the center of global trade shifted from Mediterranean ports of Italy and France to Atlantic ports of Holland and Britain. Later on, London replaced Amsterdam as the principal source of loans for international trade. Okay, so now what happened is many European cities started to develop. Uh, they started to develop the population and out of the 19 cities whose population doubled, 11 of those cities, that is 11 out of 19, that is only 8 of them were European. The rest 11, all of them belonged to London. And the largest city in Britain was London. It, it became the main trade center now talking about london london acquired global significance it became the center of global trade which shifted from mediterranean ports of italy and france to the atlantic ports of britain and holland and now instead of amsterdam london became the principal source of loans for international trade London also became the center of a triangular trade network that drew in England, Africa, and the West Indies. The companies trading in America and Asia also had their offices in London. In England, the movement of goods between markets was helped by a good network of rivers and an indented coastline which sheltered the base. Until the spread of railways, transport by waterways was very cheap and it was faster than the land. In early 1724, English rivers provided some 1,160 1, miles of navigable water and except for mountainous areas, most places in the country were within 15 miles of the river. Since all the navigable sections of England rivers flow into the sea, cargo on river vessels was easily transferred to coastal ships called coasters. By 1800, at least 100,000 sailors worked on the coasters. Okay, so now London became the center of the triangular trade between England, Africa, and West Indies. And many trading companies that were trading in Asia, America, started to have an office at London. Now, England at that time, it had a great network of rivers that helped in the movement of goods. So till railways was not found, till railways was not very famous, waterways was cheaper and faster and during 1724 english rivers at that time were providing around 1160 miles of navigable water that gave rise to canal mania like you can see lots of canals are being made this was the canal system at that time Like you can see, so then we came to something called as coasters. All the navigable sections of the English waters used to flow onto, into the sea and so the cargo on river vessels was easily transferred to coastal ships which were called coasters. So basically coasters mean transfer of cargo on river vessels to the coastal ships 
by 1800 there were one lakh sailors that were working on the coasters then came the banks the center of the country's financial system at that time was the bank of england it was founded in six, in 196 uh, sorry in 1694 the uh, number is wrong on the screen it's 1694 <clears throat> and by 1784 there were more than 100 provincial banks in england and during the next 10 years that number trebled trebled means tripled by 1820 there were more than 600 banks in the provinces and over 100 banks in london itself so in 1780s we have 100 banks all over england and in 1820 you have 100 banks only in london the financial requirement to establish and maintain big industrial enterprises were met by these banks so these banks they were helping the industrial enterprises the industrialization that occurred in big in britain is also partly by the factors such as many poor people from the villages were now available to work in towns. If you remember, their lands were taken away by those big landlords and they were looking for new job opportunities. The second uh, factor was that banks, which could loan money to set up large industries, that is the presence of banks. And the third factor was good network. So we learned these three things. We learned that there were people in the villages who were finding jobs in towns. Then we, we heard about how the banks grew. And we also saw the transport system. <clears throat> so in this chapter, we are going to learn two other factors. One is a range of technological changes that increases production levels dramatically and also a new transport network which will be railways both these developments if you will read carefully you will notice that there's a gap of few decades between the development and widespread application and so one must never assume that a new innovation in technology led to it being used in the industry immediately out of the 26000 inventions recorded in the 18th century more than half of them were listed for the period of 1782 to 1800 these led to many changes we will discuss four major changes the transformation of iron industry spinning and weaving of cotton development of steam power and the coming of railways so technical uh, changes increased the production of levels dramatically new transport network created by the construction of railways but there is a gap between the development of railways or development of any invention and its widespread application and so always remember you must never assume that new technologies will be used or will be beginning to use immediately steam engine out of the 26000 inventions that were recorded in the 18th century more than one half of them were listed for the period of 1782 to 1800 and these led to many changes the transformation of iron and coal industry spinning and weaving of cotton development of steam and coming of railways okay 
so with this i'm going to end this class today for us next class we will learn about the coal and the iron industry till then stay home stay safe take care keep learning thank you